show you a real quick magic trick? Sure, sure. Check this out. Do you believe I can print this card out of my phone and come into your shadow, okay? I'm going to pull this card off the screen and give it to you. Do you believe I can do that? I have nothing in this hand and nothing in this hand, but I'm going to give you this card. You ready? It's for you. What? Isn't that cool? Let me show you another trick. Read out loud the triangles. Paris. Paris, right? Paris. Mm -hmm. Paris. Paris. In the springs, bird in the hand, once in a lifetime. Would you believe you read them all wrong? All of them? Yes. What did you, do you know what the first one actually says? What? Paris in the, the spring. Bird in the, the hand, once oh. in a, a lifetime. And you couldn't see it. I didn't see that. Do you see how easily your eyes can make a mistake? Let me show you another trick to show you how you might be making a different mistake, okay? All right. Are you a good person? I think I am. Are you a good person? I'd say so, yeah. Okay, let's see if you're mistaken. Have you ever told a lie? Uh, <laughs> you already jumped to where I'm going. Yeah. The, the answer is it. yes, right? Yeah, I see where you're going. What do you, what do you call people who tell lies? Liars. And what are you? Liars. Liars. Yeah. Uh, have, have you ever taken something that doesn't belong to you, ever? Candy, an answer for somebody's test, download music that shouldn't be free, use somebody else's Netflix account. Okay. <laughs> leave work early. Okay. Yeah. So what do you call people who steal? Stealers. You know? Thieves. 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 So what are you? A thief. thief. Lying thief. Have your parents ever punished you for anything? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so by your admission, because I don't know you, right? By your admission, you're a liar, a thief, disobedient, rebellious. Yeah. Is that a good person? No. no. And if you died today and God judged you, would you be innocent or guilty? I say guilty. guilty. Should God let guilty people into heaven? No. So where are you going? No. no. I didn't say it, you did. Right? Ah. But are you still breathing? Yes. So it's not too late. Do you know what God did for you so he could forgive you? He did something special. He loves you. Yes. Yes. What did he do for you? Uh, forgive our sins. Let me, let me, you don't know, but let me explain. God is going to punish every sin. He doesn't want you to be punished because if he punished you for your sins, you would end up in hell. So he came in as a man, fully God, fully human. I'm talking about Jesus Christ. He allowed himself to be punished on the cross for your sins, not his, because he never sinned, okay? And then he rose on the third day after he, he died on the cross, right? Yes. And the people who, who get to go to heaven, people whose sins are forgiven, are those who repent of their sins and put their faith in Jesus, believe in Jesus, okay? So just because Jesus died on the cross doesn't mean you automatically go to heaven. You have to repent and believe. Here's what Jesus said. He who believes in me has everlasting life. Tell me how to go to heaven. He who believes in me has everlasting life. How do you go to heaven? Believe in Jesus. That's right. Here's another verse for you, okay? Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and you will be saved. How do you go to heaven? Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. Okay, what's your first name? Alex. Alex? I'm going to take your name, Alex, and put it into John 3.16. So listen carefully. For God so loved Alex that he gave Jesus, that if Alex would believe in Jesus, Alex won't have to go to hell, but he can go to heaven. How do you go to heaven? That's right. I told you the same thing in three different ways from three different parts of the Bible, right? So now you know how to go to heaven, but you didn't know before, right? No. Do you believe this message I just shared with you from the Bible? It's called the gospel, the good news of Jesus. Yes. Are you ready to lay down your life and to follow Jesus forever as your master, as your God, as your savior? Yes. Okay. Is it okay if I ask you four questions, four questions and then pray for you to receive Jesus? One, do you acknowledge, agree that you sinned against God? Do you believe Jesus died on the cross and paid the penalty for your sins on the cross? Oh, yes. Do you believe he rose on the third day? Yes. Do you commit to obey and believe in Jesus for the rest of eternity, forever? Yes. Heavenly Father, what, what are your first names? My name is Yair. Javier? Yair. Yair. Oh. Alex. Yair and Alex. Lord, would you please save Yair and Alex by the power of the gospel and, and the power of Jesus' blood? Would you please fill them with the Holy Spirit so they can obey you and please you? Please save them right now in Jesus' name. Amen. Listen, guys, do you realize my prayers have no power to save you? But Jesus has that power. If while we were talking or while I was praying, you made a true commitment to, to follow and obey and believe in Jesus, you're saved. You haven't done anything. It, it's all happening here and here in your mind and your heart. And if it's true, your body is going to follow, right? 
your body, you're going to live a different life. Yeah. The old Yair, the old Alex, is it Alex? Yeah. yeah. The old Yair and the old Alex will die. And the new Yair and the new Alex will come to life uh, empowered by the Holy Spirit. Yeah. That's how you'll know you're saved in the future, okay? So when you look back in this moment, let's say five or ten years from now, look for two things. One, you continue to believe the gospel, the good news that Jesus died for you, paid the penalty and rose on the third day. Two, you continue to grow in holiness. Anybody tell me what it means to grow in holiness? To be less and less sinful, more and more holy. You're, you're obeying God more and more out of love and understanding. You're loving God more because you, you start to get Him. Do you know why you start to get God? Because the Holy Spirit is in you and you start to, to devour His, His Word. The more you, you read His Word, we call it eat, okay? The more you read or eat His Word, the more you're going to grow spiritually. You're going to become a new creature. You're going to become strong spiritually, right? And then you're going to start to please God. Those things don't save you. But when God saves you, those things will start to happen, okay? Do you guys live around here? Uh, no. What city do you, are you from? Riverside. Riverside. Do you guys already go to a church somewhere? Yes. What kind of church is it? I go to a church in Fontana called St. Christopher. Oh no, uh, St. Joseph, my bad. So it's a Catholic church? Yes. How about you? Uh, St. Patrick. Okay. Do me a favor. I'm going to show you something that's really, really important, okay? So I'm not being critical. I'm just showing you something from the Bible. Can you read this verse out loud, Ephesians, right there? This one? Yeah, nice and loud. For by grace you have been saved through faith and not oh and that's not yourself yourself right yeah it is the gift of god not work let's let less oh, less sorry let's anyone should boast. do you understand what that's saying no, I don't. let me break it down you're saved as a gift from god that you receive by believing by faith okay and it goes on to say it is a gift not of works. Do you know what the not of works means? Not by anything you do. Okay. Nothing you can do earns salvation. So the moment you believed, assuming you just believed, you were saved. Okay. But the good works are part of salvation. They are a result of salvation. So the reason why I'm showing you this now is because you tend to go to a Catholic church. The Catholic church teaches against the Bible. They teach that you have to believe plus do a whole bunch of things like Eucharist, baptism, last rites, and unspecified confirmation, unspecified number of good works. That's unbiblical. So find a good Christian church. Let me show you something else in here. There are resources in here. These are churches in the LA area, like that one right there, calvaryCCA.org. You're going to find one close to you. You can enter your zip code or your city and find, okay? So, so let me give you a, a little slogan to help you to know how to live as a Christian. You ready? Live, excuse me, read, pray, and obey every day. Read your Bible every day, pray to God every day, and obey every day, every day, okay? My name is Tony, my email is in that piece of paper, okay? okay. So do you have any questions before, before we depart? Uh, I think I'm good. You're good?